This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Welcome to the City Council Ordinance meeting of uh, Jan January 5th. Oh my god, I almost thought that was the wrong date. But uh, that's what it is. It's January 5th, 6.30 p.m. All of our um, members are present. Uh, we have two sets of minutes to approve, so let me just pull these up so I know the dates. And uh, give me a second here. So we have <clears throat> December 12th and November 22nd That's correct. to approve. And so I'd be happy to entertain a motion. So much. Okay, we yeah. have a, a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, good. Um, now, uh, for public speak time, I'm going to do what I did last time. Um, so if you came to say anything about the CPC ordinance, um, I'll, I'll make some time available once we are done having the introduction and go from there. Um, Unless anybody, well, there's nobody else. Unless you have something else you'd like to speak on other than what's on the agenda. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Um, so one of the things that uh, before I have Owen speak really quickly here, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that we did get um, feedback from the city attorney on the um, vacant storefront ordinance. And uh, so, you know, I feel we can, once Owen is done and we have input, sounds like there's people walking down the hall, maybe we can dig into that just a little bit. And yeah, take sure. A look. So we'll do that um, second. We'll do that second. Okay. Um, so, because that way we can, you know, uh, I, you know, I don't think that we're going to be here for too much longer than an hour though, just because I'm, you know, like I'm fading a little bit. So, <laughs> okay. um, so that being said, uh, Owen, do you want to talk about um, where you're at and maybe catch Tom up because Tom wasn't at our last meeting. And formal apologies no. for ghosting you on your last meeting. That's yeah, I can give you, so, <clears throat> yeah, so Councilor Peek, I can give you the really the quick rundown is, is that, um, you know, the, this, this newer language is kind of predicated on what I feel is the city's interest based on the, municipal, on the um, Commonwealth's interest in having, you know, currently three advisories um, around um, potentially accepted practices by crisis pregnancy centers, the outgoing attorney general who is now going to be the governor. Um, but and outside of that, more importantly, the Massachusetts the, the Department of Public Health and Mass Health. Um, and so, you know, those advisories are pretty clear. And I feel that um, we those need to somehow be um, uh, transparently shared with the public. And so the newer language is kind of more about um, public health information than it is about um, enforcement, right? So the original language, I think, ha was offered a lot of potential legal complexities because, as, as was raised in the public hearings, and I think the whole intention here is to basically um, offer resources to our residents, constituents, people in the city or visiting the city to know and to mandate that the, the Department of Health um, share uh, government information about reproductive um, gender affirming health care. So basically just asking them to on their website or in whatever forms of writing they have to share obviously advisories, but also like if you go on the Mass Health website, they have a link to you know, reproductive health care centers, um, as well as, you know, ultimately also, you know, just kind of I've talked to them also about as we start to get into things like availability um, of like Plan B and medical um, uh, medical abortion, you know, that, again via government channels that that's that information should be shared because there's a lot of misinformation, disinformation, and um, misdirected information around um, reproductive health care, and so the newer language kind of reflects that intention to share this information, uh, whether it be the existing information that occurs now or any future advisories, because obviously, you know, the AG advisory is either going to potentially go away or it's going to, AG Camel will have new wording or 
I mean, it's very likely that, from my understanding, that, that she's going to reinforce it or expand it. And, you know, I don't think DPH or Mass Health is going to change anything. But again, there's other things too in terms of in terms of availability of, of um, reproductive health care centers in the Commonwealth. Um, that's so that's the that's the fair access piece, and then the safe access piece is really just protecting people's privacy around um, what's already reflected in, in the new MGL um, around um, you know people's right to seek within the Commonwealth reproductive and gender affirming health care to make sure that our employees in the city are respecting pri privacy and not using that information to try to pursue criminal or civil litigation in other states or help other states pursue criminal or, or civil litigation against people who come to our city or live in our city doing so. Um, and so um, after our last conversation, what I want, and I haven't quite, I've kind of like started to play around with the language a little bit. I wanted to try to um, refine some of the language in the fair access piece to more reflect the consumer and public health education piece. So while this is, um, a lot of this does revolve around kind of known uh, deceptive uh, advertising practices by crisis pregnancy centers, I wanted it more to be just about general reproductive health. And so I wanted to try to figure out how to massage the wording to reflect that um, so that it's just more clear that if you're seeking reproductive or gender affirming health care, here's all the, the Commonwealth's information about it. This should be posted on our website. Um, if there are recommended um, complaint processes around certain issues that may arrive, arise around seeking reproductive or gender affirming health care, here's how, here's the link to the form to, to make a complaint. The city's not actually the agent of the complaint, but they can help facilitate and guide people. Um, you know, in this, in especially now that Massachusetts, you know, I, was, I had a conversation with someone from um, the, um, oh God, I forgot what organization it was, um, but a reproductive uh, justice organization. You know, the amount of people now coming to Massachusetts um, seeking you know, a variety of reproductive health care, including abortion, but also contraceptive contraception gender affirm care has like significantly expanded beyond what we even have the capability to provide, which is a whole other issue. But people should know what their resources are. And so if we as a municipality can at least do our job to offer that simple public health service, I think that that's reasonable, especially in this day and age where things have become really confusing. So that's right. Um, that's, I think that's a good, um, and I would, I would just add that, you know, the difference between this version and the last version, it takes all enforcement out. So there's, there's no fines, there's no, you know, um, like com formal complaint process. Um, and really what it does is it just empowers the consumer to have relevant information related to whatever the complaint was. Um, so I think that that piece, I think, was really kind of a sticky piece. That was one of the, you know, um, and so that, that piece is gone. Um, and Brad, do you have anything you want to add? Or, or no, I just... No, 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 I'm not at all. No, I'm... Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, so I think that's a, that's a good synopsis. Um, so do you have any questions, Tom? Um, just sort of working through the process when we're t saying that you know we can guide people to information with the state or whatever if this if somebody in east hampton were to feel that you know, they were the victim of deceptive practices um by group whether that group was in or outside of east hampton is there actually any recourse at the state level like it would there is there someone we could We'd, we'd be pointing them in the direction of, um, and I'm just sort of, you know, like I, I, I don't disagree with anything you're saying, I, and I agree that probably that um, the chance for uh, legal, you know, uh, chances here is probably diminished, which is good. But um, I just want to make sure, you know, the the individuals that we were talking about, you know, at the beginning, I want to make sure 
I'm, I'm just trying to see, like, does this version still, do you feel this version still is potentially protecting those, those people? Because, I mean, I could just say that, like, our city website's better than it used to be, but <laughs> I don't know that, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how many people go to it for, as a source of, of information. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, I guess, my only. But, but, you know, when you're saying that, okay, the, the health department, you know, there's not going to be a direct enforcement thing with point people in the right direction. I guess what I'm kind of curious about from, from the <clears> research <throat> on this is, what is that direction? Like, what what are people doing about this at the state level? Are they in good hands if we send them that way? Mm. I mean, right now, you know, the recommendation is, uh, you know, to make a complaint to uh, the Attorney General's office. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's There's a form to do so, which, which again, my recommendation would be that we offer to people um, my understanding, but it's very, you know, just Kind of more uh, industry speak talk is that I think a, a lot of that approach is going to probably be expanded. So you know, I, I, my I kind of um, so the answer, the short answer to your question is yes. There is there is it goes somewhere. Uh, we're helping facilitate. We're acting as facilitators. I believe my understanding is that I think in this new administration um, some of that is going to probably be a lot more robust. Um, and I don't, I think the language we're creating will continue to reinforce that. Um, and um, that's, I, 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 my understanding is that's a big priority of this new administration, both, you know, from the governor's office to the, uh, to the attorney general, and even to the auditor. Um, so, yeah, the answer is yes. There, it, it's not like, Oh, we're just going to write a letter, but it ends up in someone's PO box. There is, there is the, the you know, there, there's expressed um, uh, a clear method of complaint and people to, to receive that who are able to scrutinize it as well. Because I think the, the concerns about the original language was well, who who makes this determination, right? So that yeah. it takes all the determination out of our hands. Just says, well, if you feel that you know you have experienced X, like here's what you do. So. I ask because, you know, we've discussed this a bit, but I've, I mean, it's different administration, but I've had constituents who I felt were, you know, nothing to do with reproductive justice, but who were the victims of what I perceived to be abuse and, and unethical behavior, who I reached out to this past administration, to you know, agents within there to, to help them, and it very big quickly became clear that they had little, zero interest in, in doing anything. Um, I do think that uh, this is good because I, you know, as we discussed it, like, you know, I, I understood the doubts some, some people had about our capacity to actually um, do what we were talking about doing. So the idea of moving it up is good. I just, and if you're saying that, 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 okay, that is something that's ongoing, then of course, like, why wouldn't we want to you know, help out? Um, so I, I guess I'm comfortable. Good. And so, you know, I think one of the things, and, I, and Owen, correct me if I'm wrong, but you might have started to address this. You know, one of the areas of this that made me feel a little uncomfortable was, you know, um, being as specific as we are around what kind of entities can um, there's no violation, but what kind of entities can disseminate the, you know, deceptive information. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think that having maybe generalizing that more. So any, any organization that gives deceptive reproductive information to citizens of East Hampton would be guided by our health department to file the appropriate, um, you know, uh, paperwork with the state. I mean, does that, is that, because that, I feel like that is one of the only pieces where we're so targeted in, mm -hmm. we generalized it and said, hey, if you had a bad experience, not at a CPC, but, and you felt like you were being deceived, <clears throat> right. and, and um, then you can file a complaint with the state. Is, now, is that something that you've considered or like, or you would consider or? Yeah, I mean, I think that, look, we have to acknowledge the elephant in the room that there, again, that there's, you know, within the state itself, there's there's advisories that specifically mention these right. organisms, these clinics or entities, but, um, and, you know, a federal report about it, multiple studies. 
So I think those need to be mentioned, but I think I agree that they should be mentioned, but then in the context of, of the broader industry of reproductive health care, if, if, if in, you know, not to, so that the, those, those historical practices are noted, but that, um, you know, not in isolation of, you know, Broader, the broader, broader industry. Yeah. And so, sure. I mean, um, you know, as I said last time, you know, there's, there's no reports out there about no advisories that you're working. right. And but 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 I think it's in in, in the, from the perspective of fairness and and um, you know being equal, equitable about this. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And I don't, yeah, I don't know I, what, I, what you guys think about that. And basically, you know, just saying, if someone from East, because, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, because there's no enforcement here, I mean, this is kind of a, an ordinance that is a, a advisory in a, in, to some nature, where it basically advises the health department to direct a citizen who has a complaint to the appropriate resource. Right. There's, so like, there's, you know, there's, there's ordinances that say, hey, public, this is what you can and can't do. And there's ordinances that say, hey, government, here's, here's how what... you should handle these sorts of situations. Exactly. And so we're sort of switching into that gear, which I'm fine with. And I also, I absolutely, I do like, you know, just given the broader context, I mean, when, you, when you're taking it from this one situation, which I, I, I mean, you've never had to convince me that it's a problem, but like, you taking it from that to say broadly, like, you know, reproductive health care, gender affirming care, you know, it seems like there's that, that potentially um, puts us in a situation where we, um, as these conversations evolve, you know, uh, it's, it's a little bit more flexible, which I, I do appreciate. Right. Yeah. And I think there's easy way to kind of like expand the language. Yeah. Expand that because I mean, like you never know, mm -hmm. but, and, and, um, and I think if we had more inclusive, language in that piece it might ease people's fear that this is targeting one specific thing because if there was a particular mm -hmm. issue then there could that complaint could be given to the health department and they could say hey you go to the attorney general here mm -hmm. so it would be it would be more equitable i guess as you say yeah mm -hmm. um yeah go ahead it sounds like that's what you're saying is that it has broadened to be you know, I mean, as, as you, and, and noticed that you, you were really specifically saying like reproductive health care and gender affirming care. So it, it might, you might understand this correctly that, you know, this, that, that's your intent with this amended language is to kind of, to, to, to broaden the, the scope. Yeah. I mean, look, when we see what's happened in Texas and mm -hmm. to some degree in Florida, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's other states that would love to do what they did have done in Texas so far with, um, you know, with their approach uh, to uh, gender identity and, and gender affirming care, that um, I want to protect against, you know, entities that can set up to, you know, advertise in such a way that people think that they're receiving that sort of care and then they're not. Um, and so I, you know, I, and I feel that that was an important piece to include. And it's also part of, you know, in terms of pulling in the model from Salem, Massachusetts, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, you know, about that piece, I thought that, you know, it was smart that they, they and that was also part of the, what they did at the state level, too. So I want to try to stay consistent with the, the, the breadth of, of that language. Um, and then, um, yeah, and I mean, and then, you know, again, for going back to the educational piece that we're, what they we're asking the, the health department to do is like, share all the information. So mm -hmm. if the state comes out with information or advisories about, you know, other clinics or entities that might exist within the state, like we're sharing that. So we're being transparent. We're not, and we're not sharing like third party information. We're not, it's, we're not posting like sanctioned reproductive equity and house toolkit on our website, right? It's just, it's mass.gov or it's affiliated information. So right. it's just, you know, which is again, like it would be like if we created ordinance during the pandemic where we you had to share all this information about where to get uh, you know vaccines, vaccines and masks and you know so yeah yeah and again i just want to reinforce it you know and you kind of hit the nail on the head this is very this style of ordinance is very similar to our wage theft ordinance where 
there's some local data collection, but ultimately the enforcement's on the AG level. Right. So. Um, okay. But that, that could work on. Uh, yeah, I think if we could, if we could find a way to create that language that made it more inclusive, so if you know it was. If anybody had a deceptive experience at any reproductive health, um, you know, service in, in as a citizen of East Hampton, they would be able to go to the health department and be directed. I feel like that would be, and and then again, like I said, it would take a little bit of the the focused nature of it to maybe ease a little of the pressure of feeling like, oh, this is only for one specific type of deceptive. If you know, but if you know what I'm saying. So, <clears throat> so what about? And this may be a question that you can answer because you're a physician. <laughs> physician assistant? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, but I play a doctor in television. <laughs> <laughs> so can, can, we, can we just say more broadly deceptive healthcare practices? Or is that so broad that we end up wading into other, you know what I mean? Yeah, because I have a few ideas about, about how to word this in a way that honors the kind of original impetus for this, yeah. but that also has it as an and type of thing. Um, so, cause again, like I want to go back to like the fact that like the reason for all this is because all this language exists on the state level. So I don't want right, to forget right. about that, but right. um, so I want to, yeah, I, I want to make it, I, I want to be clear about kind of some of the, some of the some of the specificities, but I think that that's, yeah, yeah, I think that that's fine. You know, um, Tom, did you have yeah. a comment? Uh, just that we do have limited resources here. You know, there's there's a moment that I think it, it's important to talk about what the city can do to help facilitate this. But if we start talking about all healthcare or all consumer practices, I'm worried that the city is going to find itself bogged down dealing with all. You know, people healing crystals or whatever. My, you know, the, my fish oil. Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't suddenly, potent you're, enough. Yeah, you're, you're whatever, and suddenly you're, you've got like a whole, yeah. it's a whole thing. You right. know, there's, there's a particular type of healthcare uh, discourse going on in America where I feel there's like some lives that are really at stake and there's some uh, you know, conversations to really be had. And then I, I think, you know, I had heard that people say, why not just do this for all deceptive practices? And well, there, there is some there is some resources that will ultimately be expended on this stuff. Right. And so I do feel like the scope, it, I don't think it's inappropriate to keep the scope sort of limited to this moment. I agree, I agree with that, Councilor. And also, to, to, lest I forget, the, 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 the part of the reason for this is because Chapter 93A does not currently cover, um, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, nonprofits. Oh, so that's right. why the the AG's office has to kind of take 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 the ball on this. So some form of for profit um, clinic um, would be covered under Chapter ninety three A. So um, that's I, before I forget that's part of where this all started to come from is that there was there was no recourse previously for you know deceptive advertising. But I do I do agree with you know it takes away from the. Um, what seems like uh, you know uh, more of a focused approach. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it would still have the same effect. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I think I think that that's a, a so if we can maybe um, look at trying to get some language that would accomplish that goal for the, the next time that we come together, I think that would be great. Um, and then we can kind of like revisit all of the details once again. Um, but I, I think that that could be a place where we start finding some common ground, start feeling like maybe this is going to be less litigious than it, it has been presented in the past, because um, there would really, like, there would really be no context for, you know, because it's it, it's a broadly a, applied, mm -hmm. not just specific to one type of. Um, right. So it's not viewpoint discrimination. Exactly. Yeah, and I and I also don't see how basically sharing state government information would be right right i agree with that too um and so any other comments um <clears throat> i don't think that this specifically applies to the ordinance itself but at the last meeting i think it might have been you that suggested um that we we do some kind of a public health awareness campaign mm -hmm. um where where would we see that happening 
like at what stage is this just something that we would generally uh, uh like a campaign like that unless we have a council that's willing to spearhead it on their own time is going to be a um it would be an ask of one of the departments right right and it would be at the discretion of their um you know department head right. whether they wanted to take that on as as a Okay. Um, but it's like it, that's not something. Uh, at least historically, the city council has ever said, "Hey, you need to do a public right, right, campaign." Right. Even like even with the straws and plastics, <clears throat> I know that Bree took that kind of upon herself to reach out to businesses and to yeah. try to raise awareness because she was the enforcement agent. But that wasn't something that we wrote into the ordinance or said, right. "Hey, you okay. have to do this." Yeah, I so, mean, because I just I I kind of feel like it's good to have this in place but if people don't know that it exists mm -hmm. it doesn't serve its purpose yeah right. and you know i think the the more outreach education we can do the, the more effective it becomes I agree. That, Agreed. but uh, again i know you can't just write in an ordinance you have to do a public <laughs> yeah. health campaign we, because... we have to do a social media campaign right right, right. right. exactly it comes with there. i mean i could i could say i don't think and i don't think it's like a secret but i know that there are some other projects that the health department's working on around um, public health in general, but also access to, to kind of necessary public health items, um, as simple as like COVID tests and, mm -hmm. and uh, menstruation products, um, you know, masks, uh, things like that. And I think so, I know that's kind of like in the planning stages. And I think some of the conversations that I've been involved with with that, like there's a plan to do, you know, QR codes and and, and, uh, and pamphlets that might potentially also include, you know, direction to their website about right, right. a multitude of items. Yep. So I think that's, you know, that's where, you know, I know there are all these open inputs. So. Yeah, okay. Great. Anything else? Okay. Um, so I did promise at the beginning that I would hold public speak time until the end of this discussion. And so I'm happy to open up public speak time now um, I would only ask that you keep your comments to within three minutes. Um, try to keep it to the the, um, the topic to what we are dealing with here, with this specific ordinance, um, and you know just address the board if you feel comfortable. And when you do speak, just state your name and address for the record. Anybody? Pam Kimberly, East Hampton. I have questions. I don't know if we're allowed to ask questions about what you've talked about. I, I think that I'm 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 willing to entertain questions if you have if we can, you know, keep right. them relatively brief, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's about this stuff. Right? Yeah, so. sure. So um so the thing that you're um you're concerned about is people coming into the state who are looking to have an abortion, basically. Mm, not necessarily. No. I think the concern is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, the concern is that if someone is looking to get some reproductive health care, that they might be uh, influenced by advertising, by websites, um, et cetera, to go somewhere where they're not going to get the services that they're looking for. It doesn't matter whether they're in East Hampton, whether in Massachusetts, or whether they're coming from out of state. It's just anybody that is going to be given false information about reproductive health care and then act upon that. What, what brought that about? What brought, what, uh, so why was the reason you want to do that? What if, if came you, up in public knowledge that all of a sudden you want to do that kind of thing? Yeah, so if you look at, uh, if you look at the ordinance, which I think is, um, I think, I don't know if it's on the, web. is it on the website yet? Do you know? It should be. Right? I think it is. Yeah. It is on the website, yeah. Um, there has been um, uh, multiple warnings from Mass Health, from the Mass Attorney General's Office, uh, statewide consumer advisory. When? Um, in July, 2022. Yeah, so just this year. Yes. Right. Yep. So it's, well, so that warning or yep. whatever, what was that to do with? What was what was their point? Specifically, uh, people being misled and what, given misled about what? What I what I spoke of earlier, being Did like uh, across the state. No, he's saying the state. Yeah. Yep. But so, what was the reason that they 
notified you in 2022? Oh, it wasn't us. It's a statewide advisory. So it was right. issued by the Attorney General to the entire state, basically saying that there are organizations that are saying that they offer certain services, enticing people to come for those services, and then they're not getting those services. And what was that? What, what was, was the place that was doing that? Oh, I would. I think they're all over the place. There's many, many, many. Crisis centers. Yes. Okay, so this yeah. whole thing is, isn't like a general, we want to help everybody find whatever. This is about abortion. People coming from out of state into this state looking for an abortion, East Hampton's going to make sure they find a safe place to go for that. I think is it's more, no, point? it's more about anybody that wants to get reprodu reproductive services has the knowledge. But they don't have to come to our state to get reproductive services. Oh. Okay. The, so I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to stop you there because this is, this is veering off of what I consider to be the track of getting feedback on this particular ordinance ordinance. And I feel like we're talking in circles right now. Um, and so well, I think I'm if you have a, a if, well, I, it sounds like you're making statements. Um, and, not, and so if you, if you do have a question, I would entertain that question. I did. Okay. Um, I said, what was, why, why did this come about? You said, because people were looking for re reproductive health. Services. Services. Yes. Why do they have to come to East Hampton, Massachusetts to look for that? Well, I, I don't think it's just about people coming to East Hampton. I think it's about anybody, our citizens in East Hampton, who might be looking for reproductive services we want to make sure that if they are misled, and it doesn't matter if that they're mis misled in East Hampton or if they're misled anywhere in the state, that they have the resources to be able to say, I was misled, I, who do I talk to? And for our health department to say, here's who you talk to. That's, that's what this ordinance does. Right, but now all of a sudden there's a huge need for it. You, somebody said that, I think it was, uh, I think it was you that said that. Like there's all of a sudden there's a huge need for this. Like we gotta get on the ball here. Well, I think I think it, this it's, is uh, it's mostly population in East Hampton. I, I think I think you're misinterpreting that. I think the oh, the yeah. huge the huge need is the fact that there's been multiple advisories issued by the state that not very many people know about, um, and that that we feel as this ordinance I think kind of puts out that if those advisories um, exist, there is probably a need to educate people and to help them find the resources to be able to say, I was misled. And so before, I think if you remember from the previous version of this, there was an enforcement, there was a fine, there was all these things. Now, basically what it is, is if, if you feel like you were misled, and what we're talking about is like broadening the language, say if you you know, wanted to get any reproductive health care service and you were misled, it doesn't matter if it was a CPC or if it was, you know, any other organization, then you would be able to go to the health department and say, I was deceived, I would like to make a complaint. Who else would deceive? I don't get Well, that. I don't know. I, I mean, <laughs> granted, there's no, there's no other health advisories, but say you went to a, a you know, a, um, a, a center that maybe performs, uh, you know, different types of services and you felt like they misled you. Um, there should still be recourse for those people as well. Right. And, and you know, Sorry. yeah, no, actually, if you, I mean, feel free to jump in. If yeah, you, I mean, let's say. Well, what if the abortion mill, um, you know, say you referred them to the abortion mill in Springfield and it didn't go so well. Then they would be absolutely 100% under the so what, they the language would sue of, East Hampton for that. No, 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 no nobody no. would be suing. It would basically, if they oh, no. felt like they were misled um, by a place that offered reproductive services, then they could go to the health department, just like if they were felt like they were misled by a CPC, and they could say, "I would like to file a complaint. Where do I do that?" And the health or the health department would say, "This is where you would file the complaint," which is the same for either one. Right, but what I'm saying, I understand that, but what I'm saying to you is there's more, there's, I'm talking about my city here, East Hampton, mm. so Our there's city. more of a chance that you would get a, something bad from the abortion mill in Springfield happening, going on, than you would about somebody giving out diapers or clothing. Well, this doesn't, this doesn't have anything to do with diapers or clothing. No, I know. This has nothing to do. This I'm has only, so would. if you, if you advertise here, let me, let me just 
put make like make sure that this is clear. If you advertise that you are giving diapers and clothing, and for someone who was pregnant, and then when they got there, you said, "Ha ha, just kidding." Now you have to listen to me talk for an hour. Yeah. yeah. Like that would be deceptive, right? That right. wouldn't be that wouldn't be honest. Absolutely. And so if you don't do that, then you wouldn't be deceptive. So this wouldn't apply. But, and, but if but but if one of our citizens went somewhere else and they felt like they were deceived, and it doesn't matter if they were going to seek an abortion or if they were going to seek you know advice around um, adoption or if they were going to seek advice around contraception or whatever, under the language that we're thinking about you know the next time we meet having, that would be able to be brought to the health department and they would say, okay. Thank you for telling us your concern. This is where you would file your complaint. So are you gonna have a list of places you're gonna refer people to? The yeah. only places would be to the attorney general for a complaint. Yeah. Wait, right. can, you, can you clarify that question? So could somebody call up and say, where can I go to get an abortion? And, and you say, you can't say and if you say, I don't know. Well, that's what you have no, to say. No, no, but we are. But but the ordinance does recommend that we publish Mass Health's list of reproductive health care clinics. Right, which which is a pretty common thing to be posted in a health department state anyway. Sanction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, a lot, you, and it says you have to do that. You have to publish those places. That's the recommendation of the language. That so it's oh, it's just a recommendation that you should publish. Where they can go publish through. information from the state the state Medicaid insurance about wh who accepts Medicaid for um, reproductive health care services yes right so that way people can be informed but you don't have to do it you have to vote on well, whether to do that or not no I think it would be um, You're forced to do that by the state I mean at the end of the day it would be at the discretion of the okay. health department you know but yeah I, I think that um, yeah. So anyway, I, I feel like we've we've reached a good ending point for this. Does anybody else have any? Yes. Shelley Warner from East Hampton. Um, just a couple things. I just really hope whatever you guys are going to put in place isn't going to ever blow back on them. I mean, I hope also if you guys are going to put list of abortion clinics and stuff, maybe you can also add on pregnancy support center such as the Bethlehem house mm -hmm. for people in need because I think right now during this time we're at such a critical point that they really need these services and a lot of people don't even know I mean I lived a couple streets down from them didn't know even about them or know anything about them until after like all of the vandalism so actually it ironically <laughs> brought a lot of awareness to who they are yeah, yeah. in the area but I wouldn't have known that and right. it's, it was just kind of an amazing thing to find what they do. I yeah. mean, and I, I wish I knew it, it a long time ago. Quiet. Yeah, and I, and I think that that's, um, I would agree. Um, because I think that, you know, and that's one of the things that's frustrating about this process is this would not have any impact on the Bethlehem House at all. And the fines are gone now. The, all, everything's gone. This would yeah. literally have zero and impact well, whatsoever. It's just referring it to what's already existing. It yes. refers to what's already AAG. exists. It's just, it's sad that we have to have city tax money going to the resources of something that's already existing, but it's, I mean, yeah, that's all. Yeah, but I um, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. I see. Them. Well, I mean, you can finish. Feel free to finish. Yeah. Finish. Um, yeah. I just, I just hope that it doesn't have any repercussions and negative impact on them. Because I'm glad to see the fine and the like yeah. stuff like that in town is lifted. And, and just so you more know, of a recommendation. It, exactly, and and that's part of our process here. Is you know, if if someone's doing what they're supposed to be doing, we don't want to we don't want to penalize them for doing what they're supposed to be doing. We want to make sure that if someone who is not doing what they're supposed to do, you know, comes in, then there's at least an acknowledgement that there's resources to be able to have some um, regress. So. Um, is that all? Yes, thank okay. you. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Sarah, you wanted to clarify? Oh, I just wanted to clarify that any information that would be shared on the health department's website would be state 
information. Like we're not going to be making up lists, you know, or and certainly we're not referring anyone to any sort of med. We're not offering referrals for any sort of medical services. So it's just we're the, the we're just making available, making people know about information that's already available from the state. So. But is there a way to also add into the ordinance, like just for the opposite side of, like? I not think that might be difficult because generally health departments are oh. they're governed they're governed by the mass um, the state health authority. They're actually not even like we don't have any governance over them. Um, but if we pass this, then they would say, okay, yeah, well, um, however, they're posting information that they're getting from the state. So it's not like they're going through and compiling a list. And so if they started to add to those lists that wasn't from the state, then like who's to stop them from going through and adding things that aren't on the state list, which wouldn't necessarily make sense because they weren't vetted through the, the mass, um, you know, state health department. So I think that that piece is, is you know, it's very common practice for uh, local health departments to post state health advisories and to post state health resources. Very common. I mean, it's probably, without the ordinance, it would probably be done oftentimes anyway. So I, I just want to be clear about that, that, you know, our local health department wouldn't be adding any li anything to the list that the state's putting in. Councilor. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just say, I, th I think a better resource for that is um, we have a city social worker um, who works with, I imagine, all of the same folks that you all work with. Um, so maybe it's making sure that she understands what resources are available at the Bethlehem House, um, because she definitely <clears throat> makes nonprofit referrals. Um, so, you know, I wonder if, you know, if you all are okay with it, I can, you know, send her an email and see, you know, what kind of list she has or you know if she uses like a database or whatever it is and she does yeah okay it's, okay yeah it's very likely yeah. okay but that's a good a really good idea yeah yeah okay any other thoughts i was just kind of curious for a little clarification he had mentioned the 93 a um policy and State the law. so i was just kind of curious on that oh that's just um um consumer protection that's just like the so right now it doesn't it doesn't um, go after the nonprofits. So Correct. Looking to add that in, basically. Yeah, there's basically or? right now there's a loophole that 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 nonprofit organizations are not covered under the state consumer protection law. So that that has become an issue historically when people have complained specifically about crisis pregnancy centers that there's no recourse. So um, um, yeah. But it would protect you from a used car salesman that entices you to come in Love for a cheap lot. car and yeah. switches it out, right? <laughs> right. Okay. So, um, as long as it's not a non-profit selling that car. Um, any other, any other uh, thoughts? Uh, yes. Yep. Just make sure you state your name and address yes. for the record. I'll make it easy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you know, I actually made a note for myself that if you come, I know how to spell your name now. Oh, Thank I you, I appreciate it. <laughs> I always appreciate another Z. Yeah. <laughs> very much for your patience and your kindness to listen to us because I feel that's very powerful and very important and I do believe in discussion. I just feel it's getting to be a little bit too complicated. You said that there are these resources already listed by the state mm -hmm. and Mr. Riley, when you mentioned that I had said about a campaign, that is what I feel should be publicized and brought out in uh, different uh, you know, events in the community. You have health events and so forth, or at your flu clinics and so forth, without having to go further than that to just reassure the people that this is, or have it on your website too, mm -hmm. uh, and not make, I, I, I just feel that once you get involved, you're accepting some accountability and responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that comes with liability. I and when you are talking about referring people, and I can say, yes, That's you burn to the lawyer. Mm -hmm. And then the person they're complaining about, they need to get their lawyer, and you know the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just feel, why make it complicated? And why put this liability 
when if someone comes to the health department, and I guess this is where the bulk of the responsibility would go to for the educational component and responsibility, um, they would help, they would advise, but that's all they can do. They can't take the issue itself, uh, or maybe they would. Would they call, say, if there was an issue with the Bethlehem House, would they call and try to negotiate? Or would they just say, or they would send the person back and say, maybe you should go back and see, or, you know. In that, in that hypothetical, I think it would be, to, you know, depending on who the health director is, you know, if the health, if it's the health director, that the, the person who's making the complaint, um, you know, basically what this would do is just direct them to the resource. Like, here's the website where you can file a complaint, and which is, you know, a very um, liability neutral action. You know, directing somebody to a website is not something you will get sued for. Um, it's because it is very simple. Um, not really. Well, <laughs> for some for some people, it's about. <laughs> but it's also there's a time element there too. Everybody's busy. Everybody's inundated, and you prioritize. Yeah. And so some of those complaints or uh, issues may not get addressed immediately, and then people might get impatient, and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, uh, it, that ninety three A that did not cover nonprofit. Correct. So now it, the, your ordinance would include nonprofit. So this this is separate from 93A. 93A is a state law that covers deceptive practices for business. Um, but 93A has a loophole for nonprofits, which is why if someone is, you know, doing deceptive advertising, normally they'd be able to say, "Well, you're violating Section 93A." So you know, here is the consequences. But if it's a nonprofit, there are there's no consequences. So basically, this is just filling a little bit of a void. But you know, there's no consequences other than a direction to here's the here's a way to contact the state attorney general to file a complaint, and there is a complaint website which would then potentially trigger a, you know some events or maybe put uh, pressure on the state to, to create some sort of legislation that covers this. Um, because they could go back and say, well, we have this many complaints, and so this is something that obviously is an issue. Um, but 93A and this ordinance are, are separate entities. And but the state, your ordinance would cover the nonprofits. It would cover nonprofits. Does the state cover the nonprofits? Not yet. For deceptive practices, not yet. Well, that's confusing because you, the, the ordinance and the town will cover it, but if you refer to the state, if it's not profit, what will they, well, they, if they get enough of complaints then they might do something about it. Other right. than that, it'll probably sit on a desk because I'm sure they're inundated with work. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of it's a possible. slippery slope there. It's, yeah, I mean, there is, there is a little bit of um, clear as mud uh, <laughs> optics going on with that. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it seems like, and it really, there's a new attorney general coming in. So, um, these types of things um, oftentimes can be used as a litmus test for what are the issues that are important. Yep. And, and so I think that that is important because if you are getting complaints and those complaints are coming in at a volume, then that will make the attorney general take note. And the attorney general already has taken note because they issued the advisory. Um, but let's just say it was on the other end of the spectrum and there was complaints coming in about, you know, some uh, another clinic that was offering reproductive services, but it wasn't on the state's radar. This would just put it on the radar. Well, I, I think in light of what Pamela Hibbert was asking, this all came about because of Roe versus Wade being overturned and the attention was more on the abortion issue and have it readily available and so forth. Uh, but not in this state, actually, because the abortions are available. Yeah. But they're coming in from other states. Right. Well, and I think I think that this actually um, was uh, on the radar before the overturn, um, because there was there was, had been a lot of complaints around the state, because the CPCs outnumber reproductive health care facilities three to one, um, and so there was a lot of um, people complaining. Uh, because a lot of times those CPCs were in neighborhoods that maybe where people didn't have the resources to be able to go and dis discern the difference between 
a CPC and a reproductive health care facility. Um, and so this was on the radar far before um, Roe was overturned. So just for context. Yeah. That's correct. I, I yep. guess like okay. the individual a little more credit that if they're looking for an abortion, they would Google or get online and find the resources or if they're looking for Pregnancy care right, and so we're, we're so I'm gonna I'm gonna steer us back to the ordinance. I will yeah. respond to that one thing, which is, if they were online googling and the place had deceptive, um, a deceptive website, that would potentially sway them to go to that place, and that would be what this is addressing. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. But and but if we could sway it back to the ordinance that we're talking about, that would be good. Because I feel like we're getting a little off track, but. Um, do you have any other questions? I don't understand the reasoning for the ordinance. I, I think okay. it's on, if it's out there anyway, where people should go and can't go, why is the town even getting involved? Well, that's that's a I guess. That's my question. I, I guess the big question here is, if someone goes to the pregnancy care center and they don't talk about abortion, but that's in the back of the mind of the individual, and they don't talk about abortion, can they bring uh, you know, a complaint saying they didn't talk about abortion? No, it would have to be deceptive practices. It'd have to be like, like yeah. you, you know. And, and generally what we're talking about is like, um, you know, advertising or a website. So it's, it's and it's, so it, it doesn't even, this doesn't even cover really, like if you said, hey, you should come here and you said things it, like it doesn't, do we explicitly say if someone says something? It's mostly no, something I mean, that you can prove like in print. Well, yeah, I mean, this comes yeah. out of a long established history going back a long time, many years. I mean, many, many years of advertising that encourages people to seek the services of certain establishments that don't offer the services that they think they're going to receive. And we're talking multiple decades. Um, and so what we're staying out of, well, we're not doing anything because there's no enforcement. Right. We're just providing public education around government sanctioned messaging around reproductive health care, gender affirming care, and navigating people to, in this case, if they want to complain about deceptive advertising, where to do it. We're not enforcing anything. We're not, we're not creating any consumer protection on the, on the city level. Um, but there's an established demonstra demonstrative problem. There was a, a federal report about this during the Bush, um, Bush Jr. Um, called the Waxman Report that talks all about this. There's, there's, multiple, there's multiple independent um, um, peer-reviewed reports about this. So people are, I mean, you, you say, well, why don't people just Google where to go? That's the problem is that they're, they're Googling or they're finding pamphlets and they end up, they end up places where they, they weren't intending to go. And then they're, now what we can't do is we can't control the information that they receive there. Right. Um, and people can't make complaints about the information they receive there because that is protected First Amendment and religious rights. Um, but we can address the fact that people are seeking a variety of reproductive health care services and, and, you know, potentially gender affirming care services and they may respond to something they see on Google and um, go somewhere expecting certain services and those services aren't offered at all and they don't even find that out until they've been there for an hour I mean that's again that's more I'm digressing but that's the issue and it's a historical issue it happens to people and that's why in, in for the sake of educating people and in the sake of our interest in in, in, in public health that that's that's why we're we're doing this. Right. Um, and I'm going to move us on here. Uh, do, do you have any comments that you'd like to make before I? Oh, I don't know if you've already talked about the gender affirming care, like the services about the gender affirming care, because this is also related to this ordinance is also addressing the deception. If there are any regarding services that are part of the gender affirming care. Correct. So whatever the treatments are, they claim to be safe or whatever, but then in actuality, they're not. So that's also what this ordinance applies to. And to I, to some extent. It as 
well. And we and we uh, we have discussed that part not tonight. We discussed it the other night, um, and and most of that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Owen, um, has to do with um, not sharing information from city officials. So if you came to a city official and disclosed the A, B, or C, that they wouldn't use that information to, if you lived in a place where that was not accepted, okay. that they wouldn't like call that municipality and say, hey, this person is doing A, B, and C here. Right, so, like if you, were, if you came from Texas and you were unfortunately the parent of a child seeking gender affirming care and a employee of East Hampton found that out and reported you and you go back to Texas and you're arrested. So, um, which did that, there'd be, that that employee would be referred to our HR for, you know, for Ryan, Violet. whatever. Violet. Violet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. So it's around disclosure. What, what it, does it also cover um, like treatments, for example, hormone treatments that purportedly are being recommended for children so, that so we don't get that specific oh, you don't get that we just basically say that a, a municipal employee should not be reaching out to other agencies okay. uh, municipalities or anything uh, that relating to any gender affirming care so it's just the city employees it doesn't mean that if you know uh, but that you know so it's it's kind of a narrow scope okay so it's yeah. referring to the relationship between city employees and other city employees City employees or and, and or yeah. citizens of East Hampton, you know, if some, someone was in a, like this would, uh, you know, apply to a school, you know. So if you had a, a person in a child in school and they were moving out of town and then the teacher said, oh, hey, I'm going to call this, um, you know, so like that. Right. No, that's not going to affect like parental rights, right? No, 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 no. Because I know Jesse This is only city employees. Is, city okay. employees. So this is only just around the behaviors of city employees, their Correct. confidentiality and privacy. Yep. And what they're, they're not able, you know, putting boundaries around that saying, no, don't communicate. This is part of uh, privileged confidential communications between a child. And it wouldn't have to necessarily be a child. child. I mean, oh, that was just one example of oh, right. school. Yeah. 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 Anybody. But this wouldn't involve teachers, right? Like with parents, like they wouldn't be able to keep stuff from them. No, parents. again, again, this would be, yeah, just okay. city employees, like sharing private information with strangers. Gotcha. That would also, sorry. Yeah. That might also, hypothetically, someone in Texas called the school or whatever and said, can you please temper on X, Y, or Z? They yep. did not disclose. Right. right. So it's not just I'm going to inform, but right. also I can't disclose. Yes. Right. That's thank you for the clarification. Kind of more like the HIPAA surrounding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, situation. similar. Okay. So thank for the, really for the yeah. notes, can I just grab your name? Yes, Jean Al Wilson. Jean with a J. J. With a J. How is P A O space Wilson? Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. So um, if everybody feels like they were able to speak then um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just wrap up this little, this piece and say that, um, you know, I think for our next meeting, we'll be seeing some new language that makes us a little bit more inclu like ex inclusive, not exclusive, <laughs> <laughs> inclusive, um, which I think can only do service to the goal that we're trying to reach. Um, and so feel free to come back to our next meeting where we'll look at this new language and, you know, um, put your two cents in and just as far as like process goes, um, you know, we, when we, if we feel like we arrive at a place where we are comfortable with the language, the committee will um, say, we like this language, we want to send it to the city attorney, which will then ask the president if he's willing to do that. Um, and so then when that happens, um, if it's an affirmative, then we will send this to the full council where there will then be another public hearing so that's a full public hearing um, where the council will consider this as a full body. So just to make sure that you all understand the process. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. I'm you said another public hearing once it goes back for- Once it, once we get an attorney review, oh, okay. then, it, then it would go to the full council and then we would have the, the formal public hearing. But like I said, when we, when we come back to committee, with some new language, I'm I'm happy to do what we did tonight, which is to say public speak for
for the time when it's relevant to the issue we're discussing. So can we get a copy of that too? Copy of the new language? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I think we can, I can, once we, once I have the new language. I would recommend to share the language after the attorney review it because maybe he can send it back with a lot of recommendations. Recommendations, change, right. Mm -hmm. And then will be another yeah. uh, document instead of the one that we're. Sure, okay. but I think for I think for the next time, like I, I think we could probably have a paper copy so that you could at least take a look at, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, what the, what the proposal was. Definitely, that would be great. Okay. Do you know when your next meeting? That I don't, and it's tricky because this one sort of popped up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's um, let's. Uh, I'm gonna have a little bit of a crazy schedule. Um, it probably won't be for at least two weeks. I'm thinking probably. In two to three weeks is probably going to be the time frame, but um, I need to. My schedule is pretty complicated right now, so I'm going to have to work through with these gentlemen um, to make sure we get a time that works for us. But we'll post it as soon as it goes. One more question. I'm Still sorry. No, you're fine. On your agenda, it does say by January 23rd it's supposed to be brought to council for a vote so that's yeah. just those dates are, are can be a little confusing <laughs> so the first date is when it was introduced to the council the second date mm -hmm. is when um we need to take action on it or extend it oh. so so oftentimes what we'll do is we'll ask for a 30-day extension 90-day extension exactly. it just kind of keeps us honest to make sure we don't let things flounder and count and commit very good thank so, you very much cool. um Thank you for coming. Appreciate your input. Great questions. Um, yeah. And so, I my my time is dwindling here. Okay. As far as my attention span, <laughs> this is my first week back to work. So oh, yeah, you may this be is excused. you may be excused. Yes, <laughs> I would like to make sure that you give your pass to the person at the door. Okay. I will. Um, I haven't actually had a chance to look over those. You you haven't. Just... And so, um, what I wanted to say was. Just very brief. <laughs> um, so, all right, take care. Um, this, what we have is we have three versions. Um, one is the red line version, one is the final version. Um, really, almost all of the edits are not material in nature. Okay. There's a couple that, you know, change a little bit, but most of it's wording. Um, so, you know, as we do come and look at this, I think it's going to be um, good for us to have a, an idea of what the red line version looks like compared to the old one. Mm -hmm. But really, as far as I can tell, there's not a ton of material changes other than adding in the appropriate um, MGLs, um, add, making sure that it's all lined up. And that's, I mean, that's really um, the big changes. I don't know, counsel Councillor? Mr. President, did you notice anything that was big? I mean, as far as I could tell, it looked like it was just like edits, wording. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so I think what we can do is review it on at your leisure between now and our next meeting. Okay. And what I'd like to try to do is now that we've had this reviewed by the attorney, mm -hmm. again, like that process, I would like to send it to the full council. Yeah. And I would like to set the public hearing for this. I think this is something that can um, might cause a little consternation, but is a, a net positive. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's a lot of really good pieces of this that can really help kind of maybe reinvigorate downtown, which could be really important for our longevity. So um, that's that's my suggestion. Okay. Um, do, do they have their review? I sent it to them. Oh, yeah, we just got it. Okay. okay. Yeah. We'll read it. Because I, I meant to, I, when you sent it to me, I was like, oh, I'm going to send that to the. Yeah, no, no, that's right. I just. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, school's starting. Oh, oh man. I'm like, yeah, yeah. everything just went. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So other than that, you know, I, I think that we're in a good place okay. and maybe we can, maybe we can just, after we adjourn, we can put our heads together and see if we can look at a date. Sure. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so I'm happy to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. All right, perfect.